So once again, good evening to everyone. It's I take this pleasure to invite everyone for the episode third uh, of the webinar series, Startup Masterclass. Uh, so today's topic for the day is how can I expand my family business? So before, I think there are a few uh, newcomers who have joined for today's session, apart from the old ones, who regular ones who are attending our webinar sessions. So for their benefit, I would just uh, uh, let you brief you about the webinar series. We had started this series uh, a month back with the intention of uh, celebrating our soil alumni, basically the entrepreneurs who had chosen a different path. So we had earlier, we had two episodes. The first one was about ideation to business plan. And the second one was, uh, where do I get my funds from? So we had a success, a very good response from the audience for these two webinars. And this is our third web episode of the webinar. So where we'll be talking about how can I expand my family business? In today's world, I mean, this is a bigger, bigger question. Like many people are not opting to getting into the family business rather than going to a regular job. So we are, so two of our alumni who have chosen a different path and have joined their own organization, their own family business. So we'd like to hear more about them. So I hereby invite uh, Vipul Murakka, a batch 2013-14 of TBL Limited, which is an agri-based company in Myanmar, and Trishank Agarwal, batch 2018-19 of Sheshu Nutrition Private Limited, Shillong. So I welcome both of you to today's session. I also welcome our professor of marketing, Mr. A. N. Bhattacharya, who will be talking, who will be discussing with our alumni and taking this session further. So to Professor Bhattacharya. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, uh, nice to have uh, two of my favorite students here on this particular panel. We, uh, just for our information, we have... Uh, uh, participants on the Zoom, plus we are also beaming this on the YouTube, so there would be many people who would be there on the YouTube also. So, Kevin, you'll have to keep a watch on the questions which come on the YouTube. Uh, you know, just have a note. Of, sure, sir. Uh, let me uh, tell the audience first that uh, Vipul Murarka is based out of Myanmar. Though he is a Indian, but he's a non-resident Indian staying at Myanmar and he has his business there. His family had a business there, so he will talk more about his business uh, and how he, in fact, uh, went there and how did he start his own enterprise there, side by side, his family business. And uh, similarly, Trishank Agarwal, he is based out of Shillong, so his business operations are in Northeast. And he has also chosen to, you know, go into uh, a path which is much more organized and professional. Uh, rather than being into you know an unorganized business, which which probably his uh, earlier family business was. So we'll get to know more about their business. But before we come to asking questions, let me actually tell you the biggest joy that any teacher can have, especially a business management teacher can have, is when he sees his or her student starts practicing what we have taught them in the class. And business management is all about practice. It is not about giving lectures. So when, when young boys and girls choose to practice what they have been taught in the classroom and they start their own enterprise and when they carry the values and typically soil talks of the values where in fact you have to take responsibility of whatever is happening in the universe and you be a contributor to the wealth creation process where you actually become an employment generator rather than an employment seeker, that is where the biggest joy comes to a teacher. And as soil, we are very proud to have a large number of people who have, in fact, chosen to move into, uh, you know, the, the arena of entrepreneurship. As of now, if I'm not mistaken, the figure is more than 36 students of soil right from the first batch. They've actually started their own enterprise. And on, a, on an average, every week I get one message. Like today I was telling Vipul, I got a call from somebody in Australia. He has started his own business there in Australia. So almost on an average, if I see every week I get a message that somebody else has started his own venture. So this is very heartening. And this, I think, is the need of the hour. Especially for, for India, I will tell you, we are at a time when uh, entrepreneurship is the need of the hour, as well as the the platforms, the technology, the government, the support, the, the 
infrastructure. It is actually supporting entrepreneurship. So I hope more and more people will get inspired by the stories of Vipul and Trishank and the other panelists who will come later on in the subsequent series. So thank you once again, Vipul and Trishank. So let me uh, give you the format of this particular webinar. It is a very simple format. It is an informal discussion, nothing serious about it. It's a candid conversation that we will have. I will ask a few questions to you and I will get to know your, uh, you know, the answers to those questions. And in the last maybe 20, 30 minutes, we will actually ask uh, the audience for their questions, which uh, Kevin will field. And uh, Kevin, we can also ask some of his questions because Kevin is also an alumni. So he moved in the world here, there and everywhere. He was an entrepreneur himself earlier. He learned from his own experience. He definitely would have some passion still there. He would like to go back and start something of his own. And probably he is a much more, uh, I would say, a knowledgeable person now. Because once you do a business and you actually have those hiccups, then you learn more. That is something which is, which is the biggest uh, learning of a, of, a, of a businessman. So to start with, I uh, will actually start uh, with uh, Vipul Murarka. You have been a meritorious student. You have been one of those favorite and probably one of the role model students at Soil. You could have very well easily gone back, picked up a job in one of those multinational companies. And if I'm not mistaken, you already got a job also where you were, you were working. But you chose to go back to your family business. So first, if you can tell me more about what was your traditional family business, if you can actually explain that, that will help us to fathom the next questions that we have for you. Uh, so the my father had moved to Myanmar in 98. And uh, as soon as he moved here from, from 99 onwards, we were into agriculture business. Uh, when I say agriculture, initially when we began, we were importing seeds from India both vegetable and uh, fiber crop seeds and field crop seeds. Then soon uh, in 2002 or three, uh, my dad started uh, manufacturing seeds in, in, in Myanmar. So now only the vegetable seeds are the ones which we are importing, which are about 20% of our business. And majority of them uh, we are uh, producing here in Myanmar and in turn selling it to the farmers. So that was the current line of that is, in fact, the current line of business. So let me understand it better. That means you buy in bulk from, from say, India. And then how do you redistribute it in, in uh, Myanmar? You have no, so uh, we yeah. buy, in, right now what we are doing is the vegetable seeds. We buy from India. Uh, we repackage it here under our brand name because here the regulations permit that you cannot do it from other company. So you have to have, register them here. So that is the ones that, that those are the ones that we redistributed here among the farmers. Uh, however, having said that, we are also producing. So we have our own research farm as well. We do research of several varieties. A tall plant with a bright color flower is doing good, which will give big fruits. So we do all those hybrids and then we produce our own seeds as well. Okay. So uh, uh, one, one more question before I move to Trishank. The seeds that you pack, then they are distributed. If I'm not mistaken, in Myanmar also, there would be many districts where you have to spread the seeds all across. So yes, you would sir. have some channel through which you go. Do you have some stockists, distributors, retailers? Absolutely. 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 Okay. Very good. Now, uh, uh, Trishank, uh, the same yes. question to you. What is your family's traditional business? So traditionally... Uh... My grandfather started off from traveling from Rajasthan to Shillong and uh, he began a small uh, uh, rice, rice, uh, you know, wholesale, uh, wholesale kind of system where he used to buy in small quantities and start uh, sell, sell it in uh, larger quantities. Then we moved into government contracts where we tried securing uh, tenders for public distribution of, of uh, you know, fair price shops where you uh, get allotment from Food Corporation of India. And then you issue these, uh, basically we were a stockist where we used to get rice in bulk, rice and wheat. And then we used to uh, break those quantities and give it to uh, wholesalers and fair price shops. Then in 2001, my father uh, set up a first manufacturing unit where we started uh, manufacturing uh, manufacturing baby cereal, Ceralac. 
and that same serelac used to again go into uh, you know governmental programs for feeding underprivileged women and children and uh, so basically uh, we are we started off with uh, trading and now we are into manufacturing very good so so if if i'm if uh, correct me if i'm wrong so the 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 concept of uh, business which your grandfather started he tested the ground and once the the volumes were there then your father actually set up the uh, the manufacturing unit and then you saw an opportunity in supplying to the government which gave you some captive business so you were not into b to c but you were into b to b and then yes. b was basically government yes whereas in case of vipul you were actually into uh, i would call it b to c which is the c is basically the farmer you were actually going straight to the farmer through the channel partner absolutely sir very good now if i ask you and if you can tell me from whatever you have heard from within your family and uh, if vipul can you can tell us you know we always uh, see that whenever it is a family owned business there are some typical challenges because of the conservative nature of the family and probably because of certain apprehensions which a family has uh, they want to protect their interest in a in a in a much more closer manner so if i ask you what were the typical challenges in terms of three things first is the overall management of the business and the second is the challenges that you found outside in promoting your product or marketing your product and the third was there is a there is a sense of uh, i would call it fear in the families that we should not expand beyond what we have been found good at so we will remain in the particular domain where we have experimented so that expansion or the need to expand is also one of the challenges so do you think these challenges of management the challenge of market expansion or the challenges posed by competitors how are these challenges real in in your case uh the challenge of management yes uh, i mean the conservative nature that you spoke about that things should be done in a particular manner like if the ledger is being done in the register it should be done in the registers only so that kind of challenges yes we faced and a little bit we are still facing now slowly we are evolving but in terms of expansion or rather than diversification luckily i was not facing that challenge because uh, when i came back to myanmar in 2016 after work after soil i worked with another company for about one and a half two years and then i came back so when i came back in 2016 i was very sure that i didn't want to get into the agriculture side of the business i just didn't want to uh so my family was uh, uh, accepting of that fact and then that's when we had started dehumidifier business in myanmar uh we were the pioneers in bringing desiccant based dehumidification and it's not a it's not a small uh, uh small value product it the min- the least uh it price for cost price for that is about 3000 dollars and it can go up to several 100000 dollars so that's we introduced that in myanmar in 2016 and now we have more than 100 installations already so i jumped from the agri business which would have been easier for me probably to expand uh then i started this but having said that i here i want to bring out one point that the challenge is actually within ourselves rather than the family uh because when even when i was coming to myanmar i'll be frank i didn't want to come back i'm like why should i join family business let me begin something on my own or my job is doing good but since i was the only child i was pressurized a bit to come back and i think that was one of the good decisions that i took because yeah i mean uh, the challenge is within ourselves that okay i am going to with my family business people might think it's easy to do that i've got an easier path but trust me it's not it's a different ball game altogether so you have to come out of your own apprehension first very good so uh, uh, typically i would say that you chose if i can put it this way and correct me if i'm wrong you chose not to enter the agri business because probably you had some apprehension that your parents might actually not like your way of doing business maybe a professional way of doing business they said hamara business theek chal raha hai don't interfere in this you want to do business go ahead and do something else 
Was that yeah. one of the questions in their no, mind? No, no, no. Actually, it's the other way around. They want me to enter so that I can bring that professionalism. Okay, very good. Very good. Coming back to Trishank, I remember we had a lot of conversations when you were at Soil and uh, I had some very, uh, you know, nice uh, personal interactions with you about the challenges that you were facing uh, uh, in, in your family uh, business where... Uh, uh, you know, employees were there for the last 30, 40 years. They probably thought that this company is theirs. You know, your father does not want to remove them because he feels that nahi, nahi, yaar, ye jayenge, to hai. so that emotional bond is there. So whether they are actually looting and cheating, you still have to continue with them because theek hai, they are the ones who else will come. So what do you feel? What were the management challenges to change the perceptions and the working styles of your, uh, of your parents and your elders? The challenges that you face in the market, which probably forced you to think of diversifying and moving into something else. So, did you face these challenges? Yes, sir. Definitely, as you mentioned. So, basically, uh, I feel you know, uh, you, uh, for uh, so you see these challenges exist when you try to change something which has been going on. There is always some kind of friction. Uh, so, I think the whole problem is. You see, traditional businesses are people dependent, but you have to make it system dependent. When uh, processes are people dependent, that's where, you know, the entire business module was lacking. But once we become system dependent and the system will tell us how much inventory is coming in, how much cash flow is coming in. And uh, the whole problem was, to get, uh, you know, the my seniors, I'll say, my father or my grandfather, to see the viewpoint of being system dependent. Now, uh, just as, you know, uh, Vipul said ki ek ledger chal raha hai, so they are writing on the ledger, so they'll still write on the ledger. So what we have to, you know, we, we as MBAs also have to evolve with that system. If I go and tell them that, no, no, you remove the ledger completely and completely come on to a, you know, fully automated system, then they'll say no. But if I see you maintain the ledger and I will maintain the ledger automatically, let's do both. Then they'll say yes. And once they see that, yes, the automated system is working, then they'll do away with the ledger. So, I mean, challenges will always be there. Even today, I face challenges. It's an everyday scenario when we want to diversify, like, uh, you know, uh, convincing someone to completely come out of these normal grocery trade like atta, suji, dalia and then move into something new like manufacturing chips which is totally something which we've never done before. Again, challenges come in but again, once they see an opportunity, they generally tend to move out of it. Very good. Very good. I, I, I see that you are fortunate that uh, uh, Neetika Madam has actually joined. I, uh, uh, Kevin, can you actually give her an audio access? So she can actually say hello to both of these bright alums. Nitika, are you there? Just a minute. Uh, I can't see the participants over here. Okay. I think she will. She will. She will, she will uh, respond back. I have said this. She must be hearing. So let me let me go back to uh, Vipul. You know, when I say that uh, you made a statement that I did not want to go back to family business. You know, the outside world was much more glamorous and probably, you know, uh, you have been in the best of the places, uh, you know, for your education. You have seen the best of the world. Uh, you know, IT companies, you know, cyber hub of Gurgaon, sector 29 and all those things, you know, that attract you more. So, uh, may I understand uh, what exactly was the motivation apart from the pressure from the family, which obviously you could have very well evaded because nowadays as young boys and girls, pressure doesn't really work. What was the motivation? There was something back in your mind which probably forced you to go back and say, okay, yes, I can do something different here. What was that motivation? Uh, so, I think if you would remember, I always like to start new things and pursue new things. Yes. So, uh, it was 2015 uh, December when I had come to visit my parents here 
and uh, then we were having a serious discussion with my dad that you know when i can move on move move back to myanmar uh, then this idea of uh, that this it rains seven months a year in, in myanmar but having said that none of the factories in myanmar were using dehumidifiers which is just like your set aircon unit but little more expensive to control moisture and that's when i saw the gap that yes i mean there are nestles here unilever is setting up plants colgate is going to come here traditional businesses also here but none of us none of them are using uh, dehumidifiers because of that like food products they were giving lower shelf life the 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 garment when the garment was getting exported to europe like all marks and spencers uh, zara you name the brand they are being manufactured here but what was happening was i read in a newspaper that Uh, a shipment of about two million or twenty million, I can't recall the figure, got rejected in the Europe because fungus had come, uh, had uh, uh, come up the, in the garments, just because they were not using dehumidifiers. So I saw that gap there, and I was like, okay, so I know a dehumidification company from uh, from uh, India. Let me talk to them. If that can be worked out, if something could be worked out, then you know I can probably think of seriously think of moving back. So that. Uh, within me i had that sense that okay this is a gap which i need to fill in and this was challenging for me so that's that was one of the biggest motivations probably you can create something new and take your family business to newer heights yeah now one one sub, uh, subsequent question before i go to trishank do you think the learnings at soil helped you in any way in uh, ideating for this new business or running this particular business smoothly definitely sir 100% uh i mean uh like i was i had done biotechnology uh, from university of nottingham i had no clue about management i mean theoretical uh, theory, theory part all the accounts uh, session that we had done all the economic sections that we had done yes we might not be applying the concepts you know like this is the curve that we have to follow in economy and all but when you think about it at the hindsight what was taught in soil we were uh, how do you say it? at the back of our head we were somehow implementing it here and the in i think there's a network challenge there i i guess so okay he'll come back so in the meantime we'll actually move to trishank so trishank yes, uh, i i remember you, know, you were one of those hard working meticulous very serious into studies i remember the summer internship that you did and the company for which i think milk basket was the company where you were working for and the type of stress you were undergoing when you had to stand in those stores and the store owner literally called a policeman to say who is this guy who is standing inside my store and the experience was traumatizing to a certain extent but still after that you came back and probably you know you complained initially ki sir i won't be doing this this is actually something which is not correct but somehow now you realize that that was an experience which really made you what you are today and you never sat for the placements you actually wanted straight to go back and do business and while you were at soil you were following up with the uh, sidbi uh, you know dpr that you had submitted what was the motivation which actually dri- was driving you so i personally feel you know uh, so you know just a interesting conversation i was having with my dad yesterday and you touched upon it a person needs to struggle to learn you know if you have everything on your plate you'll never learn so you you relate back to the struggle which i was going through in summer internships and till today you know we we do struggle and uh, you know it is important for a young person to struggle is then only when he learn one or two new things and uh, in a family business when you start something new and you're struggling and if that works out the type of you know respect which you gain that you know keeps on pushing you and you keep on trying harder and harder and uh, when you talk about you know academic seriousness uh you know like vipul uh, mentioned we don't know the you know whether like theoretically whether we are applying it or not but uh, at somewhere at the back 
of our mind it helps us in a very very big way like small decisions making instantly everything i mean i personally i'm i'm thankful you know that i paid so much of attention in the mba program and every day it helps me i mean every single day it helps me very good very good now uh, in fact uh, i can see some participants like palash agrawal is there i think he was uh, trishank your matchmate no no so no palash is he was there down i remember uh, you know just to give you a small anecdote palash passed out he was from tcs he came down to soil he probably could have joined back tcs or gone gone to some other company but his father of father walks up to me in the convocation and says ki sir my son he wants to go back and do a do a job i said no he will not he will actually go back to his family business and i remember with palash we were actually discussing how to convert his business which was a wholesale business into a branded products business and i'm very happy that one of these days we will have him also on this particular show where he has created brands for himself so the entire branding exercise that we studied he is actually implementing it similarly nitin srinivasan is also there he is also starting something of his own uh i i will probably have him also on one of these days on the, on, the, on this friday show where we can talk about and maybe he'll also learn from some of your experience but before that uh, i would ask kevin also to just keep a watch on the chat box if there are questions yes. we can start having questions also because we are already half way through in between the questions we can actually have more questions from my side so you can field the question we have one question right now yeah so the question is from mohit kumar so he is like Uh, for example he is saying that if there is no business route for uh, anybody like uh, somebody may not have a business route but still wants to make his own business whatever it is so what is that uh, how does it become a business leader how does uh, what should be his approach so please share your best quality under this study so that can give us more practical experience of yours so that is one question and what are the challenges that you must have faced and have learned most and that had made you an entrepreneur so maybe uh, vipul if you can uh, uh, answer this so uh, for your first part i mean it doesn't need to be that if someone in your family has been in business or not if you feel the hunger within and if you've seen the gap okay this is something which i can fill it uh, be it in terms of market or anything just go for the plunge i mean rest of the things will eventually you may not have like a point a plan to the t but it will fall in place things will fall in place if you are true to yourself and true to the plan that you have okay if let's say you want to start a business uh, that can surpass ola also but ola is so big we get overwhelmed that oh, i can't take ola no no you don't have to take down ola you do whatever you feel you can do and like uh, they say in paul coelho has also said that you know when you do something the entire universe conspires to get you the same so just believe in that and just go for the plunge very good anything you want to add to this trishank uh you know i i will feel so in uh, i have a friend of mine he was a senior in in my bba his name is pratik gautam he is working at vistara right now he keeps on calling me and he tells me that uh, when do i take the plunge and uh, i had this conversation with him when uh, you know i'll add to vipul you need to have that hunger and uh, you see uh, when i am in the market i realize that there are two three such opportunities both which don't require any investment and it's so fun to see so uh, you know i am looking at soya i'm looking at chips i'm looking at uh, you know puff tries बट लाइक एन बी सर ऑलवेज टोल्ड कि आप जब मार्केट में जाते हो कीप यू आईज ओपन सो देर आई रियलाइज दैट पास्ता विच वी जनरली ईट इज मैन्युफैक्चर एट थर्टी फाइव रुपीज पर के जी दैट सेम पास्ता इज अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट यू कैन बाई इट फॉर थर्टी सेवन रुपीज पर के जी इन द बल्क पैक ऑफ ट्वेंटी रुपीज ट्वेंटी के जीज As soon as you pack that pasta into two hundred grams, you get one fifty rupees per kg profit margin. Okay, so and you don't need to pack it yourself. You can outsource that as well. Okay, so uh, uh, and uh, how it works out? You know, you do a few whatever you might be having when he says own business. 
he might be having some idea in his mind that this is something i want to get into get into that identify a small area where he can start and just start with it once that starts and once rotations start coming in the business will build its own capital and you know then once the linkages are created you get to know people in the market and you have self confidence then he can you know a person he or she can move from one product to other and i mean then i mean then this question won't even arise that i don't have a base of my own just adding one point to that sir uh, there are three things uh, out of which if you feel you have two of them sorted you may actually take the pl- uh, take the risk of plunging in so number one is your idea or your usp what it is called like coke has its secret recipe and all of that second is the market if you think you have good hold in the market or you can get the good hold and number three is economics paisa kahan se aayega jaise like uh, trishank said that some uh, businesses do not require so much of cash to begin with if you any of these two are sorted third can be managed so so before uh, kevin takes up the next question i'll just remind both of you and also kevin and the audience what trishank touched upon was if you remember the porter's five forces if you look at the entry barriers if the entry barriers are low then you can actually enter there you will just have to look at what are the strengths you have if you have the strength of investing in that bulk product and then packaging them and reselling them so the entry barriers were low there and once you enter that market then you can create a brand for yourself and you know that will actually create now entry barriers for others so that's a very good uh, thought that trishank you have given more questions given yes sir so uh, we have one more question from webo meta i hope it's the same webo from 2016 batch i don't know yes yes Hi, webo in case you that's you ah yeah. uh, so he has a question uh, so it says how to make standard operating procedures for a b2c and a b2b business model like a general or a standard operating procedures as well as general standard operating procedures so uh, i'm not sure that is how specific it is but this is the question he has so standard operating procedures for a b2b b2c model. and b2b so maybe you know like you can look maybe trishank has started b2c also you have uh, you know a standard uh, from a from a pack manufacturer to a distributor to a retailer and the process of getting the payment back do you have some standard procedure which is replicated all across the districts all across the states of northeast if something of that sort can be shared yes yes so uh, you know something which work in location b this is true is tried and tested so when you say standard operating uh, procedures so you first of all you have to see what is unique to your own family what is unique to your own industry i mean uh, uh, every organization is different a will be different from b so what works for me might not work for you uh, so that is entirely on you but you know standing the standard operating procedures can definitely be made uh, so that you know this is actually very important you know to make uh, procedures because what happens in a organ unorganized sector if you don't make any procedures what happens every day you get caught up in doing the same repetitive tasks every day whereas you should be focusing on you know uh, getting into the market and growing the business this is actually very important i personally try to do this on a daily basis you know uh like uh, sm- uh, when you say about b2c you can uh, repetitive tasks like order taking order placing delivering uh, you know just use uh, common uh, like basically simple things don't try to complicate it make it in a way that anyone can operate it and uh, if anything which is repetitive i'll say please please do make it into a, a procedure same goes for b2b b2b works in a very different way so uh, you know just i'll give you an example of a b2b structure i uh, visited indore recently okay and i met a uh, packaging manufacturer by the name of ralen polymers and their scale is like uh, i'll say uh, their monthly turnover is 400 to 500 crores 
and uh, they are on a very huge scale and what i personally saw there that uh, they they have basically divided the tasks and uh, you know in uh, standard operating procedures not uh, exactly b2b works more on a relational basis you need to have very good relations with everyone so when it comes to b2b also i won't say standard operating procedures but uh, you know you need to have specific people that he will take care of marketing and then he is going and liaisoning with all the people following up with them uh you know i mean uh, it's all unique to the business again i mean it's difficult to answer this question ki ye karo to ye hoga but uh, i mean it is very important and it should definitely be done and it can be done i'll i'll just add here uh, trishank webhav mehta is uh, uh, i think uh, kevin's batchmate he has his own uh, he's a, he's basically an apple grower he grows apple in himachal pradesh and he sends them all across the country and he has his own large traditional large format retail store there in in one of the suburbs of of himachal and he has been in touch with me regularly and i have suggested that he should actually expand his business and move into something more value added because apple is a very seasonal product for a few months you have apple and after that the apple grower is actually of no use but you can actually convert that apple into something else so i think probably he wants to know more about that and i have suggested that he should get in touch with you also because probably you are into food business maybe he can actually get some inputs from you definitely definitely food food fruits processing is a very big thing you know from yeah. taking out pulps to making juices yes. and uh, you know in the, it can go b2b and b2c both, both. you know pepsico procures uh, you know pulp of fruits in a very big way and i mean uh, there is always scope for processing there is a question from palash now yes sir so the question is the since you guy you since you are young you might have different approach to solve a problem and your family member may not agree to your approach so how do you handle such conflict situation and convince them very good question mm-hmm. very good question uh, trishank knows it very well and i think vipul would have also faced this challenge so vipul do you want to take it or should i take it i think first you take it and then ah. i like so you know uh sir what was the name of the domino ceo uh, faculty who visited us i can't arvind nayar arvind arvind nayar so uh, palash you know i was very very depressed you know that i used to have friction with my family always and in the lift uh, you know i met him and i said sir this is the problem you know i keep on having friction with my dad and uh, he is not willing to change then he told me in one sentence trishang the problem is not with your father the problem is with you with me in fact because i am unwilling to change and uh, you know uh, the thing is that uh, this will always be there but uh, we have to strike a balance between the older generation and our generation until and unless the balance is not there it's not going to move forward you know even if the older generation agrees to what we are doing at the back of their mind they'll be like are yaar ye kar raha hai he's doing whatever i don't know where he's heading but uh, there has to be a balance to everything when it comes to big decisions you know we can't just do whatever we feel like when it comes to smaller decisions sometimes you know what i personally do i feel it's a small thing we have to do a you know uh, outcome problem ratio if something we do doesn't work out and it creates a small problem and you know that uh, the older generation or your seniors as i say my father and grandfather won't take it so harsh on you you know then might as well don't tell tell that you are doing all this and skip skip them entirely and do what you feel like but when it's a big decision has big impact then definitely you know strike a balance try to arrive at that one particular point where you know both of you guys are on the same boat i mean that is very very essential but whatever you do you know please don't ever break the balance don't ever make them feel ki he is lost his way that should never be done i mean growth look we are young right now i am what like 26 years old 
you know i have my whole life in front of me and even if growth is slow it's okay but you know the culture should always be maintained adding to that i mean what prashank has beautifully said and in fact he said it in uh, uh, sometime before as well that you know just yes uh, elders being elders they are little hesitant so try to break that barrier by giving example so what i do generally is okay i want to do this this is the outcome of that even if i don't reach that 100% of the outcome even if i reach 80% they become satisfied okay this is working and they implement it like the new challenge that we me and my uh, father are arguing about is uh, so we started atta business in january 2020 it's going good we are giving tough competition to ashirwad here and all of that so now i want to get into maida production but my dad is not uh, convinced that maida would sell that much and there are many players as well so that's what i have told him okay i will be taking this particular chunk of money i'll be needing this amount of time these are the results that i expect these results if they if i achieve it in this much time in this much money if they work then we can expand so that's the risk that he is also willing to take if i just say give me 100000 dollars and you know of course no one will do that, give that not even a boss father or anyone so step by step very good One of Trishank's batchmates has asked a question. Yes, Pranit, I think. Yeah, yes, again, Pranit. Pranit. Uh, so uh, the question is: When you started with your B two C model, did you use completely new distribution network, or did you collaborate with existing player and share their distribution network? So Pranit, we were into B two B selling to the government. We didn't have a B two C network at all. Okay. and uh, my idea to get into b2c was not to earn money at all my idea was to build the network so you see in b2c the entire uh, uh, so in meghalaya i mean uh, you have to do a population survey but i found out that you know uh, 70% of the consumers are very price sensitive uh, 20 to 30% are not so when it comes to price the entire distribution network depends upon price and getting into b2c is not that tough you know uh, try to identify places where you just focus on the network there okay so you go to a new geographical area you meet one person if he agrees to take your product uh, and it is at a lower price until and unless you're not making a loss three more people will hear about you and they'll contact you on your own gradually in a, a, a month or two or Uh, you know even uh, vipul will agree since he's getting into uh, you know ata manufacturing gradually the b2c network will develop on its own and gradually it will be so that even you know the local manufacturers will start hearing about you and once you build that brand repo then the channel will start connecting on its own people will start calling you on your own you know they'll uh, once the word is out that yes this is a product it's a good product there's a new manufacturer the channel keeps on building on its own and uh, i'll say if you can get in touch with someone who can give you a good overview of the channel like uh, suppose there are uh, three to four distributors uh, out of them two will be uh, amb will be you know a good option to get into because the payments are good you know the distribution is good and all i mean that with that that is immaterial that is definitely immaterial but you just have to get in touch with one or two people and uh, once you get in to, to touch with them then they themselves start telling you ki you go to him go to x go to y go to z so that's how it keeps on building and yes i had to develop a completely new distribution network and um, i'm still developing it i mean building a distribution network is a very big task to do there are a few questions in the chat box also even uh, yes sir so there is one question from harshit gupta basically has two questions so he says that uh, he has a family business in real estate but he he wants to set up his own business someday and he says that how would i know that an opportunity that i find is worth investing my time and energy into and the second dilemma he has that 
what if it doesn't work out then i am losing out opportunities at college or the placement thing so he has this dilemma as well mm. <laughs> so you can't have apples and mangoes together i mean <laughs> <laughs> so incidentally harshit gupta is actually a very bright student i he's a marketing student i i really like the energy that he has but i think uh, his challenge is his family business is into real estate and real estate is not doing that good great as of now so what does he do does he go back or does he do something else how where does he look for new opportunities can he look at some synergy to be you know taken from his family business or has it uh, has it to be a absolutely new venture i think probably those are the dilemmas that probably he has in his mind and then the question of obviously not succeeding so that is another thing so maybe you know uh, 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 vipul can ask this answer this question from seeds to a dubid humidifier an absolutely divergent business you are not into that same business you are absolutely a new business new market new technology new mark new new people just keep your eye open harshit i mean see if there are two things either you come up with a brand new idea that eureka moment that you know okay this is going to change the world this is going to change it if not something existing where is that gap what others are not doing real estate is very broad i'm not exactly sure what your family is into but are they missing out on something because of which real estate is not doing maybe you can plug that gap like oyo what oyo did uh i mean there were so many hotels but they became the biggest hotel chain without having any single hotel uh, without owning any single hotel so where is that gap that you can fill so you have to be very open about it like in my case i knew i didn't want to go into agriculture the family business number one so i had my eyes open okay what else do i have to do okay the dehumidifier the, there's a lot of moisture problem here can i plug that somehow yes through dehumidifier now i go back to my contacts do i know someone in this industry yes i know someone in new delhi they is working in this large firm can i contact him yes and that's how things started building up so don't get disheartened that you know that i if real estate is not doing what should i do think of something see what challenge you are facing in day to day life and how you can bridge that gap that will help you very good there's one more question i think uh, yes sir there's one more uh, it's from prakash uh, creating new systems optimizing it and validating them in, is the real challenge in scaling up family business how did you do that i mean creating new systems optimizing it and validating them is the real challenge in scaling up family business so how did you do that so validating i think you know we can look at uh, you know uh, uh, vipul is looking at aata business now so when you actually look at packaged aata or packaged maida this is something which is actually a new business where probably you have to estimate the market and validate whether it would be a right business or not so what was the process you followed if you have to give this advice to say for example prakash how would you actually want to give him what should be the process when we started we uh, what we were doing was we set up small small milestones that okay i'll procure this much amount of uh, wheat i'll be producing this much amount of aata how much is the market size okay there are 5 million 50 million people in myanmar out of that how many are indians out of that how many are uh, from north india who eat aata more how many are restaurants how many are uh, hotels we broke down and say okay so ashirwad is catering to this much how much can i cater to what is my distribution strength we broke down to that particular fine detail that okay we will be able to serve or we should rather produce about let's say 2 tons a month to begin with that's the number that we came up with uh then when we started we realized that okay 2 ton we are producing are we able to sell the 2 tons aata that i've produced now so that's then we go to the market distribution channel you set up so and then i realized okay maybe 2 ton is too small i was very conservative I, the market was actually more than 5 tons so then quickly you uh, think how can you procure more wheat of similar quality because your quality also shouldn't change right then we realize that okay the quality is changing so why not we grow our on our own and that's what we did so it's hit and trial to begin with and once you know you hit the sweet spot like in cricket we say the middle of the bat you know when the sweet spot is hit 
then you just go for the bigger one and if you don't hit the sweet spot it's okay go back to the basics where where, where did you make the mistake okay thank you vipul so i think one more question and uh, we are about i mean like we are coming to near to the end of the session so vipul is asking one question uh, uh, pertaining to tishang i mean like can you please tell more about your milk basket experience he wants to know <laughs> is vibe from our badge no 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 is from the house okay yeah yeah right right so uh, you know that time i didn't realize it but now i realize the problem was with me not with the company you know uh, uh nothing happened you know they just threw me a ballpark challenge you know where i had to go to the market and find out what is selling so what they asked me to do in a nutshell is go to your competition evaluate what the competitor is selling and you come and tell us how much we should sell it at and what should be the discount to be offered you know so right now that time i mean uh, i got all worked up and i'll say that somewhere down the line it's my fault i could not hold up to the challenge uh, and i knew that you know somewhere i had uh, second options and you know i could uh, go for the second option but uh, at the end of the day you know if that challenge comes to me today i'm pretty sure my view will be different and my experience will be different i and i would have done a better job at that because even today you know when you are a manufacturer and there are three to four competitors in the market and they are elephants and you are a basically you know a small person they have a complete production line of you know 10 to 15 uh machines at once and you are just having one line and you have to break the market again you have to go and do the exact same thing which i was told to do in milk basket that how do you break the market of you know what others are doing and how do you carve a market share for yourself so let me tell you uh, vavo in fact uh, trishank is a highly spiritual oriented person and a very honest person at least when he was in soil he was like that and he used to tell me like uh, sir i am going to create all sorts of facilities for my employees this and that and you know pretty honest so when he was told to go and stand inside the retail store and observe the customers very religiously went there stood like there for 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours obviously any shopkeeper will see somebody is not buying anything and he is standing there at the most isne kit kat khareed liya 5 rupaye ka to bhai obviously he will get worried who so chab ye kya kar raha hai yahan pe so that was the first shock of his life that he got that okay if, if this is the way we collect data it is unethical that was the first thing that crossed his mind and he came scampering back to me he said i can't do this i said look here you will have to be slightly smarter and i think now he probably realizes that there could be better ways of collecting data also and there are better ways of managing this sort of a situation so that has been a good experience any more questions uh, as i know but i have a question yes go ahead uh, how relevant it is but just uh, uh, see uh, uh, when we have pa- when we passed out from soil like uh, we uh, and uh, you guys went and joined your family business like we pull after uh, one and a half years but uh, what i want to know is that what are the things that you learn from the your family business rather than we giving the inputs what are the things that you learn from the family business their approach what are the things that they were doing better those on those aspects okay vipul do you want to take it or should i start okay uh one thing that i learned from uh, my father in fact was that just be true to your honest i mean that's what even soil was speaking but you know maine bhi jab person suna mere ko laga theek hai ek aur gyan aa gaya lekin when i saw actually saw uh, what he meant by being true so what happened in 2000 uh 17 16 or 17 i can't recall uh, there was a major problem with the with importing seeds here but then we had committed that we will give the seeds at this particular price to the farmers we had because of some trade uh, law changes and all we were facing a lot of problem in getting it imported at that particular price but true to his words that he was he gave it despite a loss he gave it to the farmers at that price and now those farmers are with us for the rest of their lives i mean wo humse band gaye hain they generally 
अदर ब्रांड दे ट्राइंग टू गिव डिस्काउंट्स एंड रिटेलर्स को भी बहुत डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स को भी बहुत डिस्काउंट्स दे रहे हैं बट दे आर जस्ट नॉट स्विचिंग फ्रॉम आवर ब्रांड ब्रांड सो दैट्स व्हाट आई लव नाइस दशा या केविन आई कैन ऐड टू अ फ्यू थिंग्स यू नो सम थिंग्स वी लर्न इन थ्योरी एंड सम थिंग्स यू हैव टू फॉरगेट आल्सो सो आई रिमेंबर वन क्लास वेयर वी वर टॉट कि व्हेन यू बाय स्टफ यू ट्राई टू बाय ऑन क्रेडिट and when you sell stuff you try to get the payments as soon as possible okay <laughs> but when i came to the business scenario i learned it's that opposite. it's opposite <laughs> okay you try to make payments as soon as possible and you try to you know give credit but uh, you try to recover it so you know when you make payments uh, as soon as possible you develop a reputation in the market and you know people We try. They tell you, "Ha ha, his payment is good." And there are many more things, you know, which uh, which we have been taught theoretically, but you know, you have to evaluate. Uh, so I'll say, you know, uh, family business, entrepreneurship, life. You know, your personal life is attached to business in a very very big way. I think anyone will agree to that. There are many things which you have to look at a personal. point of view as well like webbov just mentioned you know that you have to give things sometimes at a loss also you know so our mba won't teach us to do that okay but uh, you have to look at the bigger emotional aspects as well and uh, on a day to day basis you know like uh, you say there is a culture running in the family business like we have a culture where we don't go for wild growth even if we have money we won't go and invest in such a place where you see growth but uh, at the end of the day something might just happen and you know all that growth might go away so you know sometimes you have to keep that technical mind at peace and you know you have to keep it ki theek hai there is time our, our time will come but uh, at the end of the day you see you have to take decisions based on emotions as well uh, many times i would say मार्केट तो नितिन श्रीनिवासन जो है हमारे ही वाज एक्चुअली ही इज अ मार्केटिंग स्टूडेंट ही हैज स्टार्टेड सम ओन बिजनेस ऑफ हिज ओन ही इज डूइंग सम ऐप इंटरव्यू इंटरव्यूज का कुछ एक उसने बिजनेस स्टार्ट किया है एंटरप्रेन्योरियल जील है सो ही वांट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ यू फेस कंपटीशन हाउ डिड यू एक्चुअली फेस दोस एस्टैब्लिश्ड बिग प्लेयर्स आई थिंक त्रिशांक आल्सो फेस्ड इट एंड विपुल आल्सो फेस्ड एनी ऑफ यू कैन एक्चुअली स्टार्ट गुड त्रिशांक So should I start or Vipul will start? Let Trishank. Trishank, you go ahead first uh, about Ashirwad so, and Anna Kut. पता नहीं क्या क्या तुमने challenge face किया है. So Nitin, look, this is a challenge which you will face throughout your life. Even if you are established brand, you will face this. Uh, this is something which is there every day. Okay, and if you think that you have an established brand, you are settled, then I mean, market छोड़ के भाग जाओ. so basically if i share my personal experience of how we uh, how of how i try to you know uh, try to move basically you see uh, what we learned in our mba is try not to be a me too brand that is very very important okay and uh, secondly chiranjeev kohli you know his classes i mean people were scared of him i don't know but i got to learn a lot from him and it actually works in everyday scenario that you find a sweet spot for yourself you do something different but don't do do something which is not meaningful okay and uh, somewhere down the line uh, you try to add value in small small ways these small ways can be you know a cash discount uh, i won't say always better margin okay it will be small ways you can see uh, like when you go to the market people are not taking back returns on damaged goods okay you do that then you see that uh, a pain point where a retailer is uh, or a wholesaler is you know requesting you ki you know uh, please hold off 
प्राइसेस हैव इंक्रीज्ड दे विल से यू कि जस्ट गिव मी वन लॉट जस्ट दिस टाइम ऑन योर ओल्ड प्राइस ओके नो वन एल्स इज डूइंग इट यू डू इट somewhere down the line you know you just try building relationships and i'll see the distribution channel is the biggest advantage you will have you know and basically distribution channel ko ek bar convince kar do that your brand basically your ethics you know this is here where soil ethics come in place okay they know i am a non nonsense person they know that clearly they don't even ask me to make one invoice and evade tax they stopped doing it uh, so i'll tell you somewhere down the line your value system has to show them that it's not only the product which they are dealing with it's even also the human being and the values that you know a new second product coming from you will will be of good quality just because of your value system so you know once you just get into the market do something new try to you know carve a niche and you know i'll i'll say ki you will kick off the existing brands in the market so when i entered into soya i was scared uh, there were players in the market who were manufacturing for 20 25 years and uh, there was one point you know where i was standing in front of uh, a consumer who was buying my brand uh, the basically consumer bought from the wholesaler the retailer bought and he said that no no i don't want like trishank's brand please take it out for my loaded vehicle and there i felt very bad and you know initially you will always feel bad there'll always be uh, this this is still there in my heart now today i'm planning to get into uh, chips basically kurkure and uh, rings and puffs so this will always be there in your heart but trust me you will definitely find one sweet spot which others are not doing and you can capitalize on that something to add vipul yes sir i think uh, trishank what he has said is bang on and in fact i'll just add one thing to it that always listen to your uh, distribution partners or your customers in fact so mere sath ye hua tha ki when this ashir i was competing with ashirwad and all of these and they had good market share here then what i did was actually my nana ji taught us jaake bas unke paas baith ke baat karo to khan chacha ek hamare grocery wale hain उनके पास में चला जाता पहले तो वो बैठने नहीं देते देन ही वाज लाइक ही वाज एक्सेप्टिंग ऑफ मी देन ही स्टार्टेड शोइंग मी द पेन पॉइंट्स व्हाट रिशाम जस्ट सेड कि ये रिटर्न गुड्स नहीं लेते अगर कोई डैमेज होता है तो ये पेमेंट हमेशा मांगते रहते हैं जब देखो हमने जब बोला है दो हफ्ते का क्रेडिट देंगे तो वापस क्यों आके मांग रहे हो सो आई गॉट टू रियलाइज ओके दीस आर द पेन पॉइंट्स कैन आई एक्सेप्ट देम एंड वंस आई वाज एबल टू आई टोल्ड देम दैट इवन इफ अ सिंगल पैकेट इज टॉन आई विल रिप्लेस इट फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट If uh, credit period two weeks, okay, you take three weeks, but three weeks na de de na, and it's working so far and so good. So keep listening to your customers very deeply. What their pain points are. Go sit out. मेरे को लोग बोलते हैं यार तुम CEO कंपनी के तुम क्यों आके बैठ जाते हो? फिर इतना पैसा तुम कुछ और कर सकते हो. But connecting to the roots, connecting to your customers is absolute key. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Well said. I mean, Vikul and Rishan. and i can agree with uh, what rishank and vipul said about building relationship and creating the distribution network because uh, during my past experience also with uh, working with one of the telecom companies so they also had this value system and how building relationship with the distributors is so important so i completely agree with both of you on that so i think uh, we are done with the questions at present and also it's like beyond 8 o'clock so we are done for the day i mean like so uh, let me let me thank uh, both my panelists and the audience and let me actually reiterate in the end as the school of inspired leadership we stand by helping the larger cause and the larger cause is how can we actually create more wealth for the nation and remember we create wealth in the form of trishanks and the vipuls of the world and they in turn create wealth in terms of tbl limited myanmar and sishu nutrition and that is how the cascading happens and our intention is only one we would actually like to see more and more inspired people like trishank and vipul they should actually join soil and in that process we definitely would want you to see to it that how can you recommend more people to come to soil who have the right values we do not want numbers alone we want people who should be of the right values 
who are inspired to do something of their own and who really want to create a change that the nation is looking forward to and we have created what is called a wonderful learn uh, leader inspired leader uh, program you would definitely would have got a an email for this uh, kevin will again share that with you see to it that if you have some people known in your circle who would want to in fact pursue an mba do share their contacts with us we will reach out to them and see to it that you know they can also be one of those valued members of the soil fraternity with these words i would like to thank both of you once again i would like to thank on behalf of uh, the soil family anil sajdev on behalf of dr neetika batra arjya chakravarti and dr dev das and on behalf of the entire soil fraternity that we wish you all the best in all future ventures and may we be enabled to create more such platforms where we can connect and help each other to grow by the day thank you thank you kevin once again thank you thank you tishan thank, thank you we have got a message from uh, nitika also she has said you kevin you can read out just a moment i'm reading it uh, nitika ma'am says thank thanks trishan can be pull and obviously and we sir and kevin for a great webinar thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you nitika we could not get you online otherwise we would have got you online thank you everyone thank you so thank much you. thank you all the best thank and you and all the best thank you for having us thank you